Hey guys, today we are going to talk about nine, I was going to say five, but nine cards that are incredibly expensive for what they are. The Zodiac, all 12 of the Zodiac animals have been going up a lot in price. The Zodiac Rat, which is a 1-1 Swamp Walk, is like $20 plus right now. I like it. It's a great collector's item. I like the fact that there are 12 of them and they are different rarities. So you have Zodiac Dragon being a rare, but quite expensive. And you can collect all 12 of them and make a piece of artwork maybe for your office. Makes sense to me. Uh, and the goat is trending as well. So if the rat can be very expensive. I don't see why the GOAT cannot be as expensive given the fact that they are the same card almost. One is in red and one in, is in black. Next, uh, Dio Chan. This card was around $25 and it was reprinted in Commander's Arsenal. I still think it's one of the most beautiful cards. Obviously, it has that random mechanic. So on your turn before your attack, you may tap it to destroy any one creature. Then your opponent destroys any one creature of his or her choice. So it doesn't have to be Dio Chan herself. You could hit one opponent, that opponent hit someone else. And essentially it's a two for one. And in that, someone else could hit you again. I don't know. It's a crazy card. Very fun, just not competitive. And as I play more and more casual, I find that, yeah, I like cards like this. Previously, I did not. I, would, I wouldn't mind having a collection of this card, but my gut feeling tells me it's going to be reprinted. All right, next, this Enchantress. So there are a few things that will always be true. Enchantresses will always have some type of value, uh, given that we enchantments will only get better in time. Essentially, when you look at things that scale well, like Snapcaster Mage is a typical example. Why is it going to get better in time? Because there can only be more instants in sorceries. There can never be less. There can only be more. The same with any enchantment-based card and having a global effect. And this card is gorgeous. I mean, I would probably buy the painting if it was like less than... Again, I don't know what these things cost, but if it's less than $2,000, I would snap by it. Looks like a gorgeous painting. Enchantment will only get better in time. This is a global enchantment or a creature with global implications, so it's only going to get better in time. Olivia. So I like Olivia on foil. And here's my rationale. Yes, she was reprinted in Modern Masters, but she came as a mythic, which is good. She, was, she didn't get downgraded. And a Mythic in Modern Masters, remember, Modern Masters is $10 a pack. So even if you pulled a Olivia, you lost half your money, assuming you didn't pull anything else. That makes her very attractive because she's, when I look at the Mythic, she's not a premier Mythic in Modern Masters 2017, but she's also not very bad. And obviously, if you can get the Innistrad foil for relatively cheap, then grab the foil because that one, that's the, that's the beautiful one, right? Original foils, in my opinion, are always going to be valuable no matter what, how many times something has been reprinted. So I do love Olivia and I like her because there will only be more and more and more vampires. All right, so this is kind of a crazy one. Time Twister, which is from Alpha. Okay, so I saw this card once and I was playing with my friends and we went to we went to the Wizard of the Coast store. This was, I believe, during Onslaught. Uh, Onslaught in the Exton Mall in Pennsylvania. And this dude was trying to sell the card. So the interesting part about Wizard of the Coast was they didn't sell or buy singles. But given the fact that their name is Wizard of Coast and they, your magic card says Wizard of Coast on it, people used to take collections, massive collections to them all the time because it kind of makes sense, right? These are, it's a store. Here's all the people interested in magic. Why are you not selling singles? And I don't know 
why they never got into singles, but I do know that someone came in with a collection of Time Twister and some other cards, and that was the first time I saw something like that, a Power 9 and Alpha. I wish I, you know, would had more money as a kid, and then they took them aside and be like, hey, hey, come here, come here, come to this dark alley in JCPenney's. So the, our Wizard of the Coast was next to JCPenney's, and um, it was easier to tell people you were going to JCPenney's because that you were actually beat up less if you told people you were JC. I, I'm not going to get into this. Anyway, Phyrexian Altar. I'm pretty sure this card has not been reprinted. It is amazing and I love it, but holy shit, it's an $85 foil. It's a $36 non foil. It is, uh, woo. I know Invasion doesn't have many valuable cards, but this is the end all be all for Invasion. It has multiple, multiple combos, infinite combos for it. All right, Tezzeret. This is my hot pickup. Tezzeret, this Tezzeret, don't get confused with other Tezzerets, is I think it's going to hit $10. I would not be surprised if it does, mainly because blue, black. So Drown Catacomb, compared to every other of the Buddy Lands or the Czech Lands or whatever you want to name them, is the most expensive. That tells me that blue black is the color people want to be in. This is not unreasonable. The one reason that planeswalkers, that double color planeswalkers have a lot of trouble seeing play. I remember a Johnny Vengeant, and it was such a powerful card back in the day, but it had trouble seeing play because you had to be Boros. Tesra was the same deal. The stronger blue black is, the more likely he'll see play. Now, is he amazing? No. He's not that great, but every Planeswalker finds a home eventually in the colors. Okay, Imperial Seal. I don't need to go over the Judge promo. As you can see, it went from 1000 bucks to 500 I have a gut feeling. My gut tells me that this will be reprinted in some superior product. So there's a lot of money out on table. This this is not Mana Drain. Mana Drain used to be 200. This is like double Mana Drain. So what if they made a super set and the super set cost $20 a pack and the Mana Drain the set was Imperial Seal? Would people buy it? Yes, people would buy it and they would get $20 a pack. Everyone would be happy. And I think at the end of the day, uh, that's how you should they should do it because why not just make everything a lottery? But they have a lot of valuable cards that are still pricey and are trending up. Okay, and last, I do want to mention this card. I will be the first one to tell you I own dozens, if not close to 100 maybe, of this card. So as many of you know, I have a lot of Mirage bulk. This was bulk, the very definition of it. Now it is $6. I'm hoping I can get $2 buy list for it and then just ship off all, I assume I have 100, let's say 50, at least 50 copies of this and get 100 bucks. That's, that's pretty good given that this card was like pennies before. Love the card. I think it's kind of good and I'm not sure why it's going up in price. I'm, is it on the reserve list? That would kind of make sense, but also kind of not make sense. Uh, I don't know. So if you if you call a phasing for your opponent, they still get it messes with their mana, but it's only one land type. But if you call phasing on a land yourself and then you Armageddon, actually that's kind of I've always played it this way. So I played this card out, and let's say I am blue white, so I'm gonna call either blue or white, so I'll call planes, and then I'll Armageddon. Oh uh, sorry, no, I have to call uh islands. And then my islands would phase out, and I had four left for Armageddon. I would Armageddon, and hmm, that would assume my opponent is only playing planes as well. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure how this would work, and why is it going up in price. But if you know, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.